Okay, Algebra 3, you are ready for your last part of the linear review unit. And that is going to be, I think, the most fun, but it can also be the most challenging. So you'll need in front of you your uh, linear programming uh, packet. And we're going to work through the first two, and then I'll have you try one on your own. What makes this unit or this section my favorite is because these are application problems. Mr. Hogsett and I will always try to give you uh, answer that question, when would I ever use this? Um, we know that not all of you uh, will be using um, this particular type of math, but we want to give you an idea of where it is used and how it's used. So for example one, I'm not attaching any meaning yet to the inequalities. I'm just giving you three inequalities. So x is less than or equal to 55, y is less than or equal to 50, and then x plus y is greater than or equal to 40. And so just like the inequalities section that you just watched, we have some steps. And so step one, um, the first thing that you need to do is you need to put all of your equations here into slope intercept form. So you need to put them all into y equals mx plus b because you have to graph them all. And y equals mx plus b is the easiest to see how to graph. Now, these two, x less than 55 and x less than or y less than 50, those are just going to be vertical and horizontal lines. So they're already in their y equals mx plus b or their simplified form. But this last one, you have to remove you have to move that um, you have to move that x to the other side and so there's the work um, notice that i took the inequality out because when i graph them um, i, I want to make sure i have the correct graph okay all right so step two is to graph all of the lines and find the shaded region now if you're like what to do, go back and watch the previous video because I do a very clear step by step on how to graph the lines and find the shaded region. Um, but it should look something like this. Now, green is going to be our x equals 55. Our red is our y equals 50. And the blue is that y equals negative x plus 40. Now, before I do any shading, I don't shade here because I really need to see that feasibility region. It's also the shaded region. You'll also hear me call it the feasibility region. I, when I graph that, I just put arrows, okay, in which direction I need to shade. So let's take a look at X is less than or equal to 55. That is a solid green line and less than, if I put in zero, zero is less than 55. So I would shade everything to the right of that green line or sorry, everything to the left. That's why my arrows are pointing left. Okay, let's look at the red line, y equals 50. It's a solid because it's less than, and because it's less than or equal to 50, I drew arrows down because if I were shading, I would shade everything below that line in red. And then let's take a look at this y is going to be greater than negative x plus 40. Pick a point pick zero, zero. So if I pick zero, zero, I get zero is greater than or equal to 40. Well, that doesn't work. So I would be shading away from zero. That's why I have my arrows pointing away. Now, in order to do these linear problems, you have to find the feasibility region. Where is the area where all three inequalities have solutions? Not just one, not just two, but all three. And so I like the arrows where all those arrows meet. That's the feasibility region. That is the area where all you pick any point in that shaded region and you will find an answer to all three of those inequalities. Okay, but we're not done because these linear, linear programming problems always ask you to maximize or minimize something. And in this example, we're going to maximize profit. So we're going to do step three. You need to label the vertices of your feasibility region. Um, you'll see that I put black X's on those, and you can see what I'm going to be looking at here. Um, I'll try to change the color here to orange. So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to put all these points in a table. Okay. All right. So my first point is 040. This point I'm circling here is 050. 
This point here was 5550. This next point I'm circling is 550, and this point is 40. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to put all these points in a table. And here's the thing about these maximizing or minimizing problems is we know that because all of these were greater than or equal to that every single point in the shaded region and on the lines okay, will work. But because we're trying to maximize profit, that means all of those corner points could will give us the answer. We don't have to check everything. All we have to do is check the corner points to get our maximum. Okay, some of it will be easier to see than others, but my recommendation is just to try all of those coordinate points in the in the profit function. So the profit function is already listed for you. Okay, the profit function was like 0.8x or 0.08x plus 0.1y. And so all you're going to be doing is filling that in. Okay, step four. Put the corners in a feasibility region into a table and find your min or max. So you can see I filled this table out for you. Stop the video and copy that and kind of see what happened. Um, and it'll make a little more sense when we start putting meaning to it. I just wanted you guys to get the steps. So clearly you can see that the point 5550, whatever that means, will give us a maximum profit of $9.40. Um, all I did was plug in. This was the profit function. It was given to me. I didn't have to write it out. It just was given to me. And I plugged in every X. Notice I wrote my X's here and my X and my Y here. So I knew I plug in zero for X, my 40 for Y, solve that profit function. And I'm looking for the um, maximum profit. This right here, is going to be the most important sentence that you write for these problems. It's your solution sentence. I don't wanna look at a table and be like, yep, they got the answer right. Mr. Hogsett and I want to know that you understand how to interpret your table. So you have to write a sentence at the very end saying, the 0.5550 will yield a max profit of $9.40. The next example will be a little bit more complicated because now I'm gonna to start to attach meaning to all of those inequalities. Stop the video here, finish all of these notes, and then join us for that next example. Okay, example two is where we're really gonna look at um, the meaning. This is the fun part of linear programming and these application problems. So, we have a farmer who has eight acres of land that he's going to plant with wheat and barley. Um, his profit, he knows he can make $5,000 for every acre he plants of wheat and $3,000 for every acre he plants of barley. So there's always going to be these things called constraints, meaning you can't, you don't have unlimited land, you don't have unlimited seeds, you don't have unlimited, in this case, pesticides. And so the pesticide is regulated by the federal government, and he can use 10 gallons for his entire eight acres. Wheat is going to require 10, two gallons for every acre planted because um, that's what will maximize its growth. And barley requires just one gallon of pesticide per acre. So now you need to figure out how many acres of wheat and how many acres of barley should he plant to maximize his profit. Okay, so the first thing that you're always going to do in these problems is to define your variables. Well, we want to know, and it doesn't matter, I just let x equal acres of wheat and y equals acres of barley. If you flip that, it's okay. Please remember, you need to be writing down everything that you see on the screen, because when it comes time for you to do your own, you're going to need to have practiced these skills. Okay, the next part is probably the trickiest part, because you now need to write the constraints or the inequalities. So right here, up to eight acres of land. What does that mean, up to? Does the farmer have unlimited land to plant? Does he have um, 10 acres to plant? No, 
he can only plant eight up to eight acres. He can plant five, he can plant four, but he has eight. So that's total acres. I don't know how much wheat am I gonna do four and four? Am I gonna do three acres of wheat and five acres of barley? I don't know what that is. So we would say X plus Y has to be less than or equal to eight, okay? And I'm gonna write this out for you. I just want you to think about it. The next, the next thing we have here, and I always look for um, units because here we have, he is limited to 10 gallons of pesticide. So that means I can't go over 10. If I use 12, I'm breaking the law and I'm gonna get a fine. So I can only use 10 gallons. So that's another less than or equal to. I can use 10, but I can't go over it. So it says wheat requires 10 gallons. So remember, wheat is X. So I'm gonna put an X here. So I know I'll have two X because I get two gallons for every acre of wheat and one for barley, but that's Y. So I'm gonna put a Y right there. So now I know I will have total, I can have two X plus one Y, and it has to be less than or equal to 10. And those are my constraints. So that first one, remember, is going to be your total. You can't plant over eight. So I don't know, four and four, two and um, six, I don't know. So we leave it as x plus y is less than or equal to eight. And then I'll have two x plus y is less than or equal to 10. That is my pesticides constraint. Okay, now we're going back to the first slide. Step one, Make sure all of your constraints are in y equals mx plus b. Okay, there it is. y equals negative 8, negative x plus 8, and y equals negative 2x plus 10. Graph those. Um, they're both greater than or, or less than or equal, so you're going to draw solid lines, and that's what your graph should look like. So at this point, stop your video, get caught up in all these notes, and make sure your graph looks like that, and see if you can shade in that feasibility region. I drew the arrows on what side you should be shading each line, okay? But see if you can now shade in that feasibility region. Stop the video here, try it. Okay, welcome back, Algebra 3. Your final graph should look something like this. So now we have narrowed down an unlimited bunch of possibilities for X and Y, okay, to just this shaded region. Our maximum profit is somewhere in this shaded region. Now, because we're trying to maximize, remember, we're going to look for the corners. So let's head to step three and four. Let me just clear this off. Okay, so I've clearly marked my corners. Um, I've marked zero, zero, but I'm not gonna put zero, zero in the table, okay? Um, that is, um, you don't need to worry about zero, zero, but it is a corner point. So I have four corner points. I'm gonna worry about three. All right, so I did the first one. I came up here and did the zero, eight corner, the very top corner there. And what about that maximum profit? Notice they didn't give you the profit function. I just wrote it for you. Well, what does that mean? Well, they told us you get $5,000 for every acre of wheat and you get $3,000 for every acre of barley. So profit has to be 5,000 X, however many we plant, plus 3,000 Y. So I wrote that, okay, that's my profit function that was given in the problem. And I've done the first one for you. So X was zero and eight was um, your Y. So when I plug that in, I get a profit of $24,000. Okay, at this point, stop the video, fill in the rest of the table, and see if you can write your solution sentence. How many acres of wheat and how many acres of barley will you produce or will you plant to maximize your profit? Okay. Welcome back. Hopefully you have filled in that table and it should look like this in the end. Um, the other point was two six and that yields a maximum profit of two eight and five zero yields a maximum of $25,000. So again, remember 
this is going to be the part that Mr. And Hog Hogsett and I, we need to see this sentence. I know the point is 2, 6. I can see that in your table, but I want to see how you interpret it. 2 what, 6 what? I'm not going to interpret that for you. So 2 acres of wheat and 6 acres of barley yield a max profit of $28,000. Okay. Now I will tell you, my roommate in college grew up in our ranch in Lander, and when she came to um, the university, she was studying agriculture business, and I had to help her with lots of problems like this. So yes, while this is these numbers are set up nicely to work out, um, in real life the numbers wouldn't always work out so nicely, uh, especially on the graph. Yeah, these were real problems. People actually do these problems. Um, they don't just say, I think I'll plant four acres of wheat and four acres of barley. There is a science and a math behind it. That's why I love these problems. Okay, let's take a look at what you're expected to do. Okay, try one on your own now. This is going to be crucial. You have to try one on your own, even if at this point you're like, I have no idea what Mrs. Toffa just said. Go back and watch this video watch the steps it will start if you practice enough these will become easier i promise so let's take a look at this a farmer has 10 acres to plant in wheat and rye hmm can't go over 10 but he can plant up to 10. that's going to be your first that's going to be one of your That's going to be one of your constraints. That's going to be one of your inequalities. Ooh, what does it mean he has to plant at least? He has to plant at least seven acres. Ooh, and I'm going to do a totally different color so you can see all the different colors. Hmm. At least. I'm going to give you a hint on that, but I want you to think about what symbol at least is. Is it less than or equal to, or is it greater than or equal to? Think about that. I always like to make the joke that when I was um, little, I always wanted to go down the slide at Waterworld and I had to be at least four feet and like five inches. It took me a while to get there. Okay, but think about what that means. Okay, now he only has 1200 to spend on each acre of wheat. Okay, to spend total. Okay, he only has that much to spend. That's all he's got left in the bank. So he has, he can't go over 1,200. On, and each acre of wheat costs $200. We're talking cost of seeds, fertilizer, pesticide, all of that is in that. And it costs $100 to plant an acre of rye, okay? So everything I've highlighted in blue belongs in one constraint. Think about that, you know, 200 for every acre of wheat, like that's saying 200 times X plus something times Y, and it has to be less than or equal to or greater than or equal to something, okay? So again, another constraint that we often ignore, but is completely, completely happens is he has to get it done in 12 hours. That's it. He only has 12 hours to get this done. The snowstorm's coming or the rain is gonna hit and we gotta get maximize that. So it takes an hour to plant an acre of wheat and two hours to plant an acre of rye. Okay, now I'm not gonna highlight the, the profit because the profit will come at the end. But here's a strategy when you do these problems. You need colors. I just pulled out the good old um, crayons when I was doing this. You need colors for your graph and you need colors for when you um, read these. Don't just read it. Read it and highlight, underline, circle. Every color that I have used represents a different constraint. So what I have highlighted in yellow is one constraint equation. What I've highlighted in pink is one constraint equation. What I've highlighted in blue is a different constraint really use your colors to help you understand how many constraints you have this farmer has a ton of constraints okay so here are some hints for you guys 
Um, just let X equal the acres of wheat and Y equals acres of rye. That'll make your life easy, just like the last problem. Okay, there are four. So yellow, pink, blue, green, four constraint equations. Okay, all four inequalities will be written in standard form. So that means, for example, I'm just gonna give you the first one, the one in yellow, you're gonna have X plus Y is less than or equal to 10. Okay, he has to plant, he only can plant up to 10. So X plus Y is less than or equal to 10. All four will be written in that form, okay? At least, I give you that hint. Okay, at least means greater than or equal to. Poor little short me had to be taller than or greater than four feet three inches to ride any slide at Waterworld. Okay, your feasibility region in this one is gonna end up to be a triangle and there will be three corners for you to check. Um, the graphs are crazy on this one, okay? They're kind of all over the place, but in the end, your feasibility region will just be a triangle. Okay. When you do this problem, remember, please do this problem. That's the only way you're gonna get good at these, especially on your own, because I won't be able to help you on the exam. Um, bring this one to class, and we're gonna do this one together in class. However, this is going to be my, my warning. If you have not attempted this one, you are going to attempt this one by yourself while the rest of us go over it in class. So it's important that you do this before um, your next your next in-school day, I will let each class know. But I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna look at all of your notes. Um, and if you're in Mr. Hogsett's class, he might be doing the same thing. Please do this before the class that we do linear programming. If you don't, I'm gonna have you sit out in the hall, watch this video and try it on your own first. It does not help to watch me do this problem. Um, it'll look easy. Struggle through it. It's okay. These are hard, especially the first couple go arounds you do. We will do a lot of practice in class and enjoy these problems. They're fun. We'll see you in class, Algebra 3. Thanks.